Hi, I'm Nick from PFG Australia, Versatile Tractors Australia. Today we're just going to go through a few simple tips on how to set up and get a versatile tractor running as efficiently as possible. Across all the versatile range, whether it be a delta track, a four wheel drive or a front wheel assist tractor, they're all equipped with their engine cruise control mode. This mode should be used when the tractor is pulling a disc, seating or any drawbar work to get the optimum performance out of the engine. By setting the mode, you simply press this button here on the bottom left, hold it in until the light turns green. To set the revs, you push the hand throttle all the way forward. To achieve the desired engine revs, simply press the minus button to decrease the engine revs or the plus button to increase the engine revs. These will move in increments of approximately 20 to 40 RPM. When using the tractor, if you wish to turn the cruise off, idle back with the hand throttle and the tractor will come down in revs. Once the hand throttle is set, you can turn the tractor off and return the next day and it will be saved at the exact same revs as previously set the day before. It's important once it's activated to keep the hand throttle all the way forward. And if you want to decrease the revs, remember, use the decrease button, do not bring the hand throttle back. This will help the engine run better as if the hand throttle is in all the way forward in the cruise mode, if your tractor requires to recover revs after going through a hard spot, it will tip in full fuel range for the engine to recover to those revs until it gets to the determined engine speed as saved on the cruise control. Here we have the versatile instrument cluster. It is the same on a four-wheel drive, a delta track and a front wheel assist tractor. On the left hand side we have the two navigation arrows, the engine rev gauge, the engine temperature gauge. In the centre we have the digital display and on the right hand side we have tractor speed, miles per hour in white and kilometres an hour in red. Below that we have the fuel gauge and on the very right hand side we have the OK navigation button and the subscreen navigation button. Across the top here in these blacked out areas where we have some lights, that's where all the warning lights will appear for the tractor. If we scroll through using the arrows we can see engine oil pressure, tractor speed and engine revs per minute tractor performance management screen, engine active fault screen. If the tractor is fitted with a PTO we can independently see the PTO speed. Engine service monitor so we can set alarms for the engine service. Distance trip computer for kilometres and metres. A lighting configuration page for service a software configuration page again for service, a transmission temperature gauge, battery voltage and we're back to the wheel slip gauge. To set the wheel slip alarm simply press the subscreen button and we'll go into the slip percentage page and to adjust it simply press the up or down arrows. To save press OK and then press the subscreen button to exit. Above we have the set slip threshold alarm and the number below is the live slip percentage. If we scroll through again we'll come to the tractor performance screen. At the moment it's set on area coverage by pressing OK it will scroll through to fuel consumption implement width, area preset, area coverage and back to fuel consumption. The first thing to do is set the implement width. Press subscreen button and again by using the arrow scrolling up 
we can set the implement width, press OK and it will go through to full meters from point of meter. To save, press OK. To exit, press the subscreen button, press OK and we'll go to the fuel consumption page, press the subscreen button, that will give us both fuel per hour and fuel per area, so litres an hour and litres per hectare. This is the best page when setting your tractor up with the cruise control when you're doing drawbar work to find where the tractor's best running spot is by simply playing with the revs and adjusting the gears and finding where the tractor uses the least amount of fuel. Nine times out of ten, once you find that sweet spot for the fuel usage and the engine is running as most economically as it can, you will find you are actually at the required speed for doing the task you are doing. To exit this screen, press the subscreen button. By scrolling through all the screens, you will notice every screen has the transmission gear. So no matter what you're doing, you can keep an eye on what gear you're in and you can look across and check your engine revs and tractor speed. Simply scroll through and you can find most things you need on this screen. If you're doing a task where you're, for example, in tractor performance monitor, you can keep an eye on all your tractor vital information on the analog gauges. Or if you wish, once the tractor is set up, you can keep an eye on everything on the digital gauge. It gives you a few options and a few views. Now we're in the cab and we've familiarised ourselves with the controls. Let's take the big tractor for a drive.